So I was trying to show my wife Keren where she can find a ditto in these games when suddenly... Is that what I think it is? I don't look like no shiny Grimer. Oh my god! What is up everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Last episode we took down our fourth gym here in Cascarrafa, the water type gym leader Kofu. And today we're going to be heading into the desert to take on our third, maybe fourth Titan Pokemon. I've honestly kind of lost count. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the fourth and it is one that seems very special. As you can see, we are in the middle of the desert and all the way across we've got the search for the Quaking Earth Titan. Mysterious quakes keep shaking the Asado Desert. Porto Marinada locals claim they've caught glimpses of an unknown creature raging about through the obscuring clouds of sand and dust. And I have a pretty good feeling as to what Pokemon this actually is, but if my theory or suspicion is true, then that means we're going to be taking on our first Paradox Pokemon today. So if you guys are excited for our first potential past slash future form, don't forget to hit that like button. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but my voice is not feeling too great today. After last episode, I felt like I wasn't really all that sick. I woke up today and I was super duper nasally and congested and uh, yeah, it's not good. But at least the body aches that I was feeling yesterday are gone, so I kind of feel like I'm getting better, though it could just be that my sickness is progressing because I definitely have more of a fever today than like a cold, which I had yesterday. And of course, the second trainer that I find is one of the black text bubbles, which last time we fought one of those, they ended up being like level 60. So yeah, I'm not going to risk it. Now, I don't want to step too close to where the Titan is, but I do want to check out that tower over there which seems to be like about halfway through the desert. So I'm pretty sure we can reach it without triggering the Titan or maybe not. Hey, Arvin. Apparently this desert is home to the quaking earth Titan. Speaking of which, the ground's been shaking on and off and ugh, making me feel a bit sick. Oh, don't tell me about feeling sick, Arvin, please. Sorry, I'm just gonna go sit down and rest a little before I get back to Titan hunting. That's probably what I should be doing too, but the grind don't stop, baby. Though, if I did feel really sick, I would just tell you guys like I did on Friday. I took a break and I'm um, feeling good enough to at least record. Like I said, I definitely have more of a fever, so I'm freaking sweating bullets right now. But the main thing that's annoying to me is just the voice. Like, I don't know, I feel like when I'm sick, I stop sounding like Kermit and start sounding more like a croaking frog. What the heck is this? A Terra-type Palosan? Okay. I haven't been able to predict any Terra-type Pokemon so far, so I'm not even going to try. As this Sandy Gas, not Palosan, is actually going to be a Grass-type. Yeah, I'm not really feeling that. But I will grab a TM for Rain Dance, and can we actually go up this? Uh, I guess not. <laughs> the ladder is a little bit too slanted, but it's okay because we've got the High Jump on Koraidon so we can get up here, grab ourselves a Gimme Ghoul, and that's really it? I mean, I guess the TM was like down below the tower already, so I didn't or shouldn't have expected much else. But yo, these freaking, what was this Pokemon called? Orthworm, I think. They look so goofy. But where the heck are all the trainers in this desert, man? Also, why am I not walking my Bramblin anymore? We need a thousand steps with it. I don't know how it still hasn't evolved. I don't even know, man. It just refuses to accumulate the thousand steps we need. But hey, we got a Stan Jorner, which I'm going to try to get behind so we can catch it off guard. Okay, he just decided to turn back around at the last minute. What the heck? Why are you only level 22? Good thing you got sturdy, huh? Because that definitely would have one-shot it. Unless that wasn't sturdy. I don't think Stan Jr. actually gets sturdy. It has a signature ability called like power spot or something. So yeah, maybe we just actually got that lucky and it survived with one HP. But that means it should be able to catch quite easily. And it does. We got Stan Jr. Don't know what the heck it's doing out here in Paldea. I thought 
that Stonehenge was like only in the UK, but maybe Spain slash Portugal also has some type of Stonehenge-like structures. I've never actually been there, so I wouldn't know. Nor have I really seen too many documentaries about the Iberian Peninsula in general. Like, I actually really like watching travel vloggers and documentaries. Like, An Idiot Abroad is one of my favorite travel shows I've ever seen. Definitely recommend if you can find it, because I don't know if it's like on Netflix anymore or what, but uh, can you please stay outside of your ball, Tumbleweed? Okay, I finally found another trainer. We got a musician with her guitar at the ready, but it doesn't make a sound. Are the strings like pulled out or what the heck could cause a guitar to not produce sound? I wouldn't know because that is another topic I'm not at all familiar with. Guitars, I mean, or music instruments in general, because I was never really musically inclined as a kid, and much less so as an adult. I am so bad at playing any instruments, singing. What I lacked in music, I at least made up for with drawing. That was always kind of my talent, which I guess could be a pretty good common question of the day. Are you guys talented at anything like singing, dancing, maybe drawing? Let me know in the comments below, and whether or not those talents have actually helped you in life, or rather if you use it for your career, for example, because even though drawing was always my passion, I ended up doing YouTube where I don't really draw all that often. I mean, I definitely could have done an animation channel or something, but I ended up getting a lot of traction with gameplay stuff, so I just stuck with it. And I still occasionally do like drawing, but definitely not as often as I used to. Arizona did hit level 32, so please tell me. <gasps> oh my goodness. It's about damn time. Arizona is evolving into. I don't actually remember what it's called, but Bramble Ghast. It's a tumbleweed, but slightly bigger. <laughs> it will open the branches of its head to envelop prey, and once it absorbs the life energy it needs, it expels the prey and discards it. Oh my god. It's even more terrifying than it already was. Okay, we finally got the 1000 steps. I don't know how that took so freaking long, but man, am I happy that we finally did it. Now, while wandering the desert, I decided to catch some more Pokemon that we didn't have in the decks yet. So Larvesta is going to be next to get registered in the decks. And I still haven't found any more trainers. Like, I'm so confused. 12 seconds later. Finally, I found another trainer who's gonna bury his head in the sand. You're not an ostrich, man. Although there are plenty of Espatras around here and also a TM for Nightshade. But I do believe that's three trainers down now. We need two more. And I seriously do not see any other ones like in this whole freaking desert. There are a lot of items though, especially Stardust, which I do need to actually sell at some point make back some of the money that we spent on these clothes. Aha! We finally have another trainer, and is that what I think it is? Behind her? Oh my gosh! There's a little sand dial buried in the sand. Come on, get your Pokemon out here. I want to look at the sand dial again. Oh my gosh, don't tell me it ran away. Still back there? Oh yes! You're so cute! Okay, let's get rid of this little Capsicid so we can get a better look at that little thing. Oh my goodness, look at it! Whoa, what the heck? Where are you going, little buddy? Okay, I guess you want to be on my team or something. Because it came running right up to us. Well, I don't know if I'm going to quite use it on the squad, but I will definitely try and catch it, considering how friendly it was with us. And that is Sandile the Desert Croc, Ground and Dark type. I actually really, really like Sandile. Like, I think I did use one in my Pokemon Black and White, if not black and white 2 playthrough. I do remember Crocodile vaguely, though it could have also been in competitive battling. Crocodile was pretty strong, but we need one more trainer somewhere here in the desert, and we are getting dangerously close to that Titan, so I'm gonna keep looking around this way. I literally could not find a single other trainer in the desert, so maybe this guy only wanted four? Oh my gosh, really? This is the only other trainer that we haven't battled, and considering the Black Speech Bubble, I'm pretty sure that means we can't handle her, but we might as well give it a try. Oh my god, what is up with that Espatra? <laughs> it just zooted across the battle. 
Okay, it's a shallow, so if we bring out a water, I mean a grass type, except it's at level 26? What? I thought the black speech bubble means that these trainers are tougher than usual. Maybe it actually means something else. This whole time I've been too scared to fight them to find out, because the one time I found one, he was like level 60. Or maybe it's not necessarily related to level, and it could be just that they're tougher trainers. Like, this lady here actually has three Pokemon, as opposed to almost every other trainer having just one or two. It definitely looks like Espatra is one of her Pokemon too, but no, that one's just standing by in the background. Like, it wants to join in on the battle, but can't. Okay, you're just gonna keep rock polishing, or are you actually gonna attack me anytime soon? Because if not, then I'm gonna absorb you. You really went for three rock polishes in a row. Okay, well, so much for this being a tough trainer. <laughs> I don't know what the speech bubble means then. Like, maybe she's gonna give us an item or something? If any of you guys know, drop it in the comments below. Are they actually supposed to be tougher trainers and we just lucked out with that lady specifically? Well, she did give us 4k in prize money. Maybe they're just, like, more rich? I'm so confused. But definitely not as much as that ostrich. Well, either way, we should now have four trainers defeated. Or actually, I think it was five that he needed. And yes, we've done it. And we get the TM for Earthquake. Let's go. That is one of the best TMs in the whole of Pokemon. I mean, it's Earthquake. Everybody loves Earthquake. Now, there was also a challenge by the Porta Marina Pokemon Center. And I think that guy wanted us to beat just four trainers. So we'll start with this little kid here. You might notice I actually brought Spinel back onto the squad. I was training up little Tinkatuff, but then I totally forgot that uh, I did actually want it on the main squad. She's back and hopefully here to stay this time, so let us keep training. Yo, what the heck? One of those Tauros is different! What? Is that what I think it is? Hold up, before it disappears on us, I gotta walk into it. Yes, it is! The fire and fighting type version of Tauros. I had heard that they were around this area, but never actually saw one. And like I said, it is a fire and fighting type, so Aqua Jet's gonna be super effective. It doesn't actually do that much damage, so we can definitely go one more. As long as we don't critical hit it, that would suck. Oh my god, RuPaul, you had me stressed for a second there, but you came through in the end. And now we can go for our Ultra Ball as the other Tauros watch on while we catch their leader. Critical capture too. So here's the dex entry and you might notice that it's still just called Paldean Tauros. When heated by fire energy, its horns can get hotter than 1800 degrees, jeez! That's almost as hot as the fever that I'm feeling right now. But yeah, because we already had Paldean Tauros, we're not gonna see its dex entry, jeez man. These Tauros are way too crazy, like, <laughs> Tauros has got to be the most annoying Pokemon in Paldea. Maybe annoying's not the right word, but they're just... Yeah, no, they're definitely annoying. <laughs> oh wow, there's another trainer literally right next to the Pokemon Center. And a very nosy Giraffarig. This definitely looks like it'll be easier than finding all those trainers in the desert was. A little bit down the path from the Pokemon Center, I found another trainer, and this actually looks like a stewardess? No, she talked about a cafe, so I guess it's Aina the Waitress! Another trainer class you don't really see every day. Unfortunately for you, I got Spinel back on the squad, and with the Metal Claw Bash from the Hammer, gonna get absolutely wrecked. Why is there a Cyclizer just chilling in the back there? <laughs> what are you doing, man? Oh, there it goes. And there goes Ina too. So this is what defeat tastes like. Yup. Now we just need one more trainer. And I'm gonna guess there's probably one even further down this way. What the heck is this? Colonnade Hollow, one of the 10 sites of Paldea. Okay. I don't quite want to explore it, but I do see one more trainer. And I hope that he counts as part of this area still. Let's find out as we talk to the league rep, and yes, we've defeated four trainers, so we get a Focus Sash. Nice. That will, of course, have your Pokemon survive with one health if it was to take fatal damage. But more importantly, it is now daytime, so let's take on our fourth Titan Pokemon, which you can see right in front of us. 
is going to be the past form of Donphan, also known as Great Tusk, I believe. Bro, this thing is massive. Wait, does Arvin really just want me to go walk up to it and challenge it? Like, this is so intimidating. <laughs> Look at this Donphan, man. Not only is he massive, but also it apparently killed a man, according to the Scarlet Book. So I'm not really sure what Arvin wants us to do against it. If it wasn't for the fact that they did the trailer of Paradox Pokemon, where they didn't actually even say what they really are, I would have probably guessed that this is an evolution. Oh my god, it's coming up to us! Wait, what's gonna happen if it we touch? Oh, that's it? Wait, what the frick? Oh my... Okay, I guess we're doing this! Earthquake! Dune Fond! <laughs> now you decide to call Arvin? It's a little too late, man. Oh wait, it's Professor Sada. Great Tusk is a Pokemon that came from the Great Crater of Paldea. I ask that you do whatever is needed to subdue it for me. With all due caution, of course. Oh yeah, sure. Send the little kid to deal with the giant, terrifying elephant. Typical Pokemon. But as usual with Titan Pokemon, I like kicking things off with Mac and Cheese because they've got Super Fang. And at least against Cloth, the very first Titan, it actually did do half of its HP. So I really wonder if <laughs> that actually works still. Oh my god, that's amazing. I guess we could have Terrestrialized. I mean, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, okay, we're slower. So Mac and Cheese will go down, but at least you did your job, guys. You got it down to half health. And now it's time to send out the real MVP, the one that we've been training up this whole time, just for this moment, actually. And that is Bramblegast, who doesn't have the loaded dice? I don't remember. Oh my god, no. No. Please, no. Why does this always happen to my poor Tumbleweed? I should have known too, because it literally used knockoff on mac and cheese. Like, I'm so dumb, dude. You might have done that to my Tumbleweed, but can you do it to Mary, who's at level 29? I have a feeling this is not going to end well as Dolliv is actually a grass and normal type. So with a brick break, yeah, that's uh, going to absolutely destroy it. But the fact that it used brick break is actually a hint at the fact that Great Tusk, or past form of Donphan, the Quaking Earth Titan, is actually a ground and fighting type, meaning that our dual wing beat is actually super effective, but it doesn't really do all that much damage. Okay. In the end, it's all going to come down to RuPaul, isn't it? As it keeps going for rapid spins, which is really not good, because it's raising its own speed, so now it's going to be faster than RuPaul even is. Our only saving grace right now is that we have Aqua Jet, and with the Terrestrialize, Water type might be our only chance of winning at this point. So, RuPaul, don't let me down, please. You're literally my only hope left. The Terrestrialized Water Aqua Jet. Why the heck did it start raining? Wait, does Terrestrial Water summon rain or something? I don't think that's how it works, but it is raining for some reason, so uh, our water moves are boosted even more. And with one last Aqua Jet. Wait, what the frick? No, there's no way. What? This has to be scripted. Okay, yeah, obviously. Uh... Where did it go? Oh, it's not over yet. Oh my god, I forgot. <gasps> you have to fight the Titan Pokemon twice. Oh, this is not good. So I went back to heal up, and it turns out that it is actually raining in the desert now, which is very unusual, if I do say so myself. I feel like it doesn't normally rain in the desert, but uh, once again, we got a very obvious rock that's going to be smashed as soon as we get up to the Titan. I mean, he's got to get his Herba Mystica somewhere, right? Bro, Donphan does not look like it would fit in that cave. Like, I'm going to need someone to explain exactly how it got in there, because I'm not sure how it got to those herbs, but Arvin, finally! Looks like you found yourself a Titan. Yeah, with no help from you. Wait, that's the Quaking Earth Titan? Is that thing even a Pokemon? It must be trying to get pumped up with that little snack. Have you ever heard of Donphan? 
Time to show that thing what you and me can do. Yeah, hopefully we do a lot better than that first battle went too. Wow, did you see that rotation? Moonwalking on him. Kind of like uh, Zacian did back in Sword and Shield, if you guys remember that animation. I'm gonna use the skull villain I caught nearby to seize a real spicy victory. <laughs> I love that Arvin keeps catching new Pokemon actually, that's so cool. Oh, what the frick, mac and cheese, yes! They love us so! And now with the Super Fang! Okay. I guess since it ate that Herba Mystica now, it's a little bit tougher, but, uh, speaking of tough, Mac and Cheese toughed it out for us. And now they deserve a little break. I'm gonna actually send in Arizona, because I believe I saw it go for Brick Break. So, predicting another one of those, uh, we should be able to be immune to it. But, of course, it decides to go for Skull Villain instead and raise that speed, which is not good for us at all. Watch, I bet now it's going to go... Actually, last time it went knockoff, so if we Terrastalize our Bramble Gas, then it won't be super effective to knockoff. Or I guess it won't be weak to it. Like, the knockoff won't be super effective. So let's do it as we grow some flowers from our head. Now we're going to become a pure grass-type tumbleweed of terror. And Scovillain misses. Okay. Oh, time for the bullet seed. Please, destroy him for me. That didn't do that much damage, actually. But, hey, critical hit with the second one. I still don't know if I have the loaded dice or not, but I'm going to say no, because we only hit three times. But we still did a good amount of damage. And if it keeps going for rapid spin on Scovillain, then... Yeah, that just gives us even more chances to keep bullet seeding. Oh god, okay, of course now it goes for us. But still, if we can hit five times with bullet seed and skull villain, why would you go for scary face? I mean, I guess that does bring his speed down, which it was getting pretty high up there with so many rapid spins, but if you'd just gone for razor leaf instead, we probably would have finished it. Now, oh my gosh. I want Bramblegast to get this victory. Arizona has been itching for a dub since Arizona was even a thing and hasn't been able to get it. So please just, oh my God, are you kidding me? I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna potion up again because we're not doing this, man. We are not gonna have Arizona go down. So Scovillain finally finishes it. I feel kind of uh, dirty about that victory, like, we didn't actually earn it or something. I mean, it's not like we couldn't beat it. Obviously, if I just sent RuPaul out, it would have destroyed it. But I just wanted to see Bramblin get the dub and give us that little dance. And we got it in the end. Plus a whole bunch of experience for everybody. Mac and Cheese going to be learning Hyper Voice, which definitely stronger than Echoed Voice. Oh yeah, double the power. Let's go. A one, a two, and a three. Good job, Brambly. You really stuck it to him with those potions I gave you. <laughs> nice going, little buddy. What even was that thing, though? I kind of feel like maybe I've seen it before. Dude, really? You haven't ever heard of Don Fan? He's got to be playing, right? Anyway, I bet if we head inside here, we'll find more of that Herba Mystica it was eating. Let's give the place a once-over before that thing decides to come back. Pretty sure he says the same dialogue every time. And every time, we end up finding the Herba Mystica, so... Come out, come out, wherever you are! What, you're just gonna ignore that Pokeball on the floor? The heck? Got the Golden Mystica, okay! Yes, we found it, our little herb! A little bit of gold leaf tea? We got the Sour Herba Mystica. That doesn't sound pleasant at all. This shape, this sheen, looks like it'll taste horrible, which means it's gotta be good for you. Now then, what does the book have to say? Sour Herba Mystica's chock full of nutrients and great for boosting your overall health. Says here it works wonders whether you're tired physically or mentally. Perks you right up. I could definitely use some then. Get over this sickness. No time to waste, let's get some food going! I don't know if I would want it in a sandwich though, like maybe a nice herbal tea. Yeah. <coughs> I 
Sorry for the wait! Here's a super healthy sandwich that'll perk you right up once you eat it. Plus, as a token of our friendship, another Titan badge! What's it going to be this time? Giving Arvin a low... Uh... Yeah, I got nothing really to say about that one. <laughs> but I believe this one should give us the climbing ability on Korai Dawn. After it eats the sandwich, of course. That's probably, well, besides flying, the best upgrade that we can get. Because the flying is kind of more like for convenience and getting around quicker. I don't know if there's any areas that you can only reach using flying, but there's a lot of areas that you can't reach without climbing, so I'm pretty excited to explore more of the map next episode now that we have this, well, not yet, but are getting this next upgrade. Munch, munch, munch. My boss tiff growing stronger too. Love to see it. Would you look at that? Seems like someone's got a proper appetite now. What about you, Cody? Oh my god. Okay. Your appetite never ceases to amaze as we get another upgrade. And Koraidon can glide? Wait, I thought we were gonna get the climb. Seems like that fella is also slowly regaining its original strength. Still, doesn't look like it's anywhere close to returning to its battle form. I mean, we only have one more Titan left, it's gotta be. Seems physically healthy enough. Maybe it's got some kind of mental block that's preventing it from returning to its true form? A mental block? I've read about it in books before. A mental scar, like psychological trauma. I think that's what you call it. Maybe it had a terrifying experience in battle, so now it's scared to battle at all. Well, don't worry. I'm sure both that brute and Mabostiff will make a full recovery eventually. So how do you feel, Mabostiff? How's that Herba Mystica working? Uh, no pressure! Not like it's fair to expect every kind of Herba Mystica to have some huge effect, right? Seriously, I thought we were about to get the climb ability, but I guess I'll take gliding. Hey, it's okay, don't worry. Orange and I are gonna make sure you're right as rain. We've got one more herb to go, and I bet it's the best of them all. It's just gotta be. All right, Orange. The next stop on our little herb hunt should be the last. But we can't lose steam until we're done. Let's keep up our momentum. Here we go! Yes! Broof. Arvin's a little too excited for Mabostiff to keep up, it seems. That's an old dog. You gotta calm down around it. Rototo! Oh, gee. Wonder who that could be. Hello, Professor. I detect that Koraidon has regained more of its original power. After it's jumped in the air, you should try pressing B again, and it should collide now. Alright. Again, not what I was hoping for, but you must continue helping Koraidon. I guess it makes sense to get the glide upgrade before climbing, since, like I mentioned, climbing seems like it'll give us access to the most new stuff that we haven't been able to explore before. So let's head back to Porto Marinada, and that's because I remember there is actually a lighthouse right over here, and that seems like the perfect spot to glide off of! Oh my gosh! Yo! Those wings are kind of crazy, like... I don't know, they just popped out so suddenly, I wasn't expecting it. Let's try again! Oh my gosh, dude. Okay, this is actually pretty fun. But, yeah, let's actually test it out, or put it to the proper test by climbing up here. And I actually explored this lighthouse earlier, but didn't really show it off in the episode. So just in case you want to know, there is actually a TM you can grab up here, as well as a Gimme Ghoul coin. But we're here for one thing and one thing only, and that is to glide. And I'm going to try to make it all the way to this island over here. I don't even know what area of the map this is. I probably shouldn't have tried to fly all the way over. Oh my gosh, we're losing altitude quick. Wait, what the heck? Yo, Koraidon, my dude. Why did you start dropping so quickly? Oh my, okay. We have a little Skrelp over here. I didn't even know that Pokemon was in here. What is that behind it? Kind of looks like a cloister. Oh my God, you're level 40. What am I even doing? And also, isn't this a dragon type? The spark was super effective, so I guess it's evolution might be in. Scrawp itself is water poison, maybe. We'll probably go for one more and try to weaken it. 
What the heck? Where's my Pokemon? Are you serious? <laughs> Wait, I've never seen this glitch happen to anyone else. My Pokemon just disappeared. Okay, I mean, uh, the weirdest part is Mary's like a uh, grass type. So it's not inherently weak to water. I mean, I know it can't swim, but still, where the heck did our little Dollop go? Oh my God, it's still gone. <laughs> what is happening? I can't help but laugh, even though, like, that's a pretty bad one. The Mock Kelp Pokemon. Yeah, I'm definitely mocking this game right now. Skrelp evades its enemies by hiding amid drifting seaweed and eats the rotten seaweed to create its poison. That's all very nice and dandy, but can someone please tell me where the heck my Dollip went? Okay, there she is. <laughs> That's how it was supposed to happen. I don't really know why it disappeared like that, but uh, we couldn't quite make it all the way to that little island, so we will try again. Jump and glide over to this piece of land where we've got a Terra-type Raichu? Yo! I kind of forgot that Raichu was in this game. I mean, Pikachu's in like every generation, every new game, I'm pretty sure. There hasn't been a single Pokemon game that Pikachu is not in. But this time, it gets to show off the new gimmick, as this is actually going to be a... What the heck? Fighting type? Huh. I couldn't really tell what that hat was at first, but oh my god, you're at level 60. Let's try this again, and this time I suppose we can try, try to fly somewhere a little bit closer, right over Porto Marinada and to these cliffs slash rock things over here. Yeah, it seems like eventually Koraidon starts losing altitude very, very quickly as we're going to splash down, but it's all good because we still have the swimming function, obviously. Dude, I'm always paranoid that I'm going to like miss a shiny. And of course, when I turn around to try to get the Pokemon, they're already gone, so who knows, maybe I did just miss one. Anyway, over here we have a TM it seems, and it's gonna be Phantom Force! And a Gimme Ghoul chest, yo, okay. Let's see, uh, I guess we could bring Kiddo? This one's gonna be at level 25 now, so even though I've been training a Gimme Ghoul from the very start, at this point I feel like it might be easier to just catch one at a higher level, but what I really want is just those coins, and this one's going to give us 60. Now, there are quite a lot of Pokemon over here. I'm going to try to avoid them as much as I can. Oh my gosh. Just did a little bounce on that Kilowattrell's head. Okay. <laughs> Use you like a spring. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. I do not want to be fighting you guys right now, especially since Kiddo is a bug type. Probably get wrecked by uh, whatever flying type move that bird might have, but... Is there anything else up on these cliffs? I mean, I guess we can go fly over to the other ones over there. We glide and, oh, that is so satisfying. Okay, actually, we get a running start and high jump. We can probably make it clean over to this one or not. Seems like it's a little bit too high for us still, but I do see a TM that we probably can't get until we have the climb feature, which again, I'm really surprised we didn't end up getting climb instead of fly. All in due time, right? Wait, is that what I think it is? Vault and Veluza! I finally found one to use! Kind of looked like there was two of them too, but I think it was just a glitch from the water. And this is actually a water and psychic type as far as I know, so assurance will be super effective, but not quite kill it. Oh my god, the Night Slash! Calm down, man. I wonder if this thing actually gets Psychic Fangs, because it definitely reminds me of Bruxish from Alola. I mean, it's got the same typing too, so I feel like it's kind of like the Paldean counterpart to it, but yeah, that should be weak enough. Let's go for one of our Ultra Balls and hopefully get it. Nice! It's a Veluza! This is going to be the Jettison Pokemon. When Veluza discards unnecessary flesh, its mind becomes honed and its psychic power increases. The spare flesh has a mild but delicious flavor. Now, we haven't actually gotten to see its animation, but I'm pretty sure it has something very unique to it that we can hopefully check out in the Pokedex. As I'm going to call you Big Tuna. Into the decks you go. And in fact, I'm going to literally check out the decks right now. Go to Recently Caught. Check out the details, and if we view motions, we can actually see all of Veluza's different animations. That's not quite the one I was hoping for. 
Wait, are you serious? I mean, I guess this is the closest we can get, because you might notice that, uh, yeah, its flesh literally comes apart, exposing its fillet insides, and I guess it reconstructs itself with psychic powers. Come on, we have to be able to make it over to this cliff at least. Are you serious? No, Cory. Oh, man. Well, I guess we're going to have to wait till we get the climbing upgrade to really explore all of these areas. Oh, my goodness. I didn't even mean to run into you, little dude, but we've got a Tynamo at level 40 still. Okay. I don't know why all these Pokemon in the ocean are so dang high level, but I did see also an Electros. Or what is the middle evolution called, actually? Well, I guess we'll find out, because here it is. Electric! But yeah, all these fishy Pokemon are a little too high level for me right now, so... What the frick? Another one of you? Okay. I want to see if we can somehow get it to do that animation. Oh, is that it? Filet away! Yo! It raises attack and special attack, so it's literally just work up. Oh, it raises speed too! But it lost half of its HP? Huh. I don't know if that was really worth it for you, buddy. I mean, it's definitely an interesting attack. It's gonna go for it again, but it can't because it doesn't have enough health anymore. So that answers that question of how you actually get to see Belooza rip off its own flesh. But yeah, these fish are a little bit too high level for me. So let's wrap up this episode by exploring a little bit more of Porto Marinada, which I can't even reach because uh, jumping out of the water, your high jump's not as powerful, but Someone in the comments actually pointed out that this port city is actually based on a coastal city in Portugal called Costa Nova. I looked it up and yeah, the houses definitely bear a lot of resemblance in terms of the paint job that they've got, which makes a lot of sense because we are in the top left corner of the Paldia region and Portugal is in the top left corner of the Iberian Peninsula in real life, so... Yeah, it makes a lot of sense for this city to take more inspiration from that area as opposed to Spain, which, like, the whole rest of the region has been. But there's actually quite a few items around this city that I collected earlier on, but didn't really show off, so... Real quick, we'll do a montage as, behind this Deli Bird warehouse, we've actually got an Assault Vest, which is a very, very good item Further down this same path, all the way in this corner, we've got a TM for Poison Jab. And under this lone tree, we have a chipped pot, which I don't believe was there earlier. So maybe that's just a randomly generated rare spawn. Now that is finally going to do it for this episode. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And don't forget to hit that like button if you guys enjoyed. And actually, I suppose we're not done quite yet because there's some cliffs over here that uh, we didn't really explore earlier, but it seems like we can reach them. Well, not with the glide, but, you know, we can just swim the rest of the way and explore a little bit because we've got a couple of items and even a TM for Heat Wave. Over on the other side of the cliff, it seems there is yet another TM for Air Slash and a trainer with Sea Pokemon. All I see is, you're dripped out, man. Look at that jacket. It's got like a Charizard, Kangaskhan, and oh my god, wait. That's not a sea Pokemon, bro. That's a Dragonair. Well, it is his only Pokemon, so maybe Spinel can somehow handle it with the big old hammer. Except our only fairy move is Draining Kiss, so not really the most damaging. I really need a Tinkatuff to learn a physical fairy move instead, like Play Rough or... I don't know, maybe it's got a signature move when it evolves or something. Thankfully, this Dragonair just kept going for agility, so one more Draining Kiss will finally finish it, and that should be quite a lot of XP, especially for Spinel, who's gonna hit level 30. Oh my god, okay, almost level 31 from that, too. Now this time for real, we're gonna wrap up the episode, so I will catch you all in the next one.